Uh, hey, everybody. So uh, I guess so far today, you've learned about the practicalities of doing a Neuropixels recording. So the goal of what I'm going to talk about is how to get your probe to be where you want it to be. So the way that I approach this is with a GUI that I wrote. Um, so I'll talk about some considerations for how you want to plan your trajectories, and then I'll show you this GUI. And then the homework tonight will be to install it and then plan your own trajectory. So feel free to ask questions during this if you want. Um, I'll take a look at the Q&A afterwards. But also um, the Slack channel for homework one is dedicated to this. So feel free to ask questions tonight or tomorrow or over the next couple of days, uh, and I can help out with that. All right, so uh, I'll talk first about a couple of general considerations you want to keep in mind when you're planning your trajectory. So the first thing you want to try to do is to give yourself as much room for error as possible. So I'll give you an example of that. When I do my recordings, what I was aiming for was this medial part of the striatum. Uh, now, if I tried to come with my probe straight down, I would have a pretty narrow window here to hit this blue zone. One of the ways I can make it slightly easier for myself is if I come in, uh, sorry, right? So this blue zone corresponds to this kind of this kind of much error. If I go on past this red line in either direction, then I, then I miss this thing. One of the ways I can make this easier on myself is if I come in at an angle. So now, because I'm coming in essentially perpendicular to this shape of this thing, that means that I've got a larger range where I can put my probe and still hit this area. So um, when you're trying to hit something, even if you're trying to hit one area, it's not always coming straight down that's going to give you the easiest time. Sometimes you're going to have to come in an angle in order to give yourself the largest possible space for getting it wrong, um, since you do end up getting it wrong a lot more often than you might think. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that you want to be mindful of which directions have leeway. So what I mean by that is, again, I'm going to try to hit this uh, medial zone in the striatum. Um, my target would be something like this. Now, I will sometimes put it a little bit more medial or a little bit more lateral because you're not going to be perfect when you put your probe in. And so if you keep in mind kind of which way you should err towards, then it might give you a little bit more success. So what I mean in this case is the mid-sagittal sinus is in the middle here. If I put my probe anywhere from the middle of this trajectory all the way up to the sinus, that means I'm still going to hit the zone. In other words, maybe I should err on the side of putting my probe more medial because I'll still hit the area. Whereas if I err on the side of going lateral, there's a chance that I'll go off of my target region. So um, the two things so far that I've told you are that you want to have the angle of the probe in a way that you maximize your room for error, and you want to know which direction you should err in. So in this case, I should err on the side of going more medial than more lateral. All right, the final thing is that you want to use electrophysiological landmarks as much as possible. So a lot of us these days are doing histology to verify where the probe is. Usually that's pretty great at figuring out where the probe was in space, but it's not great at figuring out where it was depth wise. And the reason for that is that even if you put dye along the whole probe, sometimes it doesn't make it to the tip or sometimes the tip is kind of unclear in your histology. So you're not really sure exactly where your recording is along this trajectory that you're going to get from your, from your dye and your histology. So in that case, what you want to use is these electrophysiological landmarks to figure out based on just the recording where your probe was. So in my case, for example, the target zone was within the striatum. So there's two particular things I use to locate this. The first is that there's a big difference in correlated activity between the striatum here and the cortex on the bottom. So what I mean is if I take the multi-unit activity of these two regions, they're very uncorrelated within each other, but very correlated within, sorry, they're very correlated within and very uncorrelated across. So I have this abrupt change in activity. Uh, on the medial side, I have this gap in spikes that comes from the ventricle. So I never see any spikes here. That means the first spike I see has to be in the striatum. So these are things that you'll want to find for whatever your recording is. You'll want to be able to have some signature that you can look for to say this part of the probe is in this part of the brain. All right, so these are the things that you're going to want to keep in mind when you're planning your trajectory. Now, the things you want to plan your trajectory with are this set of coordinates, which I'll go over. So these are probably... Um, 
self-explanatory to most people, but I'll just talk about the numbers that you care about. So first of all, your manipulator will look something like this relative to your rat or mouse or whatever you're using. Um, so you'll want to have this angle from the horizontal, which will be the rotation axis that you set your manipulator at. You'll also have this angle from the midline. So this is going from the tail to the nose of the mouse. You'll have some rotation relative to that axis of your actual manipulator. Um, and then you'll have the coordinates that you'll put your manipulator at. So this is the, the horizontal plane. So this is going anterior, posterior, and medial lateral from Bregma. Uh, that's just you know forward and back, left and right. And then the depth along that probe axis from the surface, which will look something like this. Uh, so these are the numbers that we want readouts of. We want these two angles. These are the physical angles you set on the manipulator. And then these entry coordinates, these are the things that when you're manipulating your manipulator, this is where you want to go into the brain. So getting these coordinates, I do with this trajectory explorer that I wrote. Um, it's a MATLAB package, but it is installable if you don't have MATLAB. So um, these instructions should be available on the handout that was sent out. And then there's going to be homework associated with this. So again, if you have questions, feel free to ask at any point on the Slack channel. Uh, and if there's bugs or anything in the future, you can always raise issues on the GitHub as well. Okay, so I'm going to now take you to just a quick demo of what this looks like. I'm going to share now my desktop. All right. Can you all see this? Great. Um, so when you open the GUI, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to have the atlas in the middle here. So this is something that you can click around and move. You're going to have the areas that the probe we're going through on the right. And you're also going to have the controls over here on the left. All right. So the way that you move this around is just by clicking and holding. Then to move your probe, the directions are listed up here. So the arrow keys move it front, back, left, and right. So I'm just going to put it up here. And you can see if I press the forward arrow, it will move forward in the brain. Backwards arrow goes backwards. And then you can also go left and right. All right. Um, that controls the horizontal location. Now to control the depth, if you hold the Alt key and go up and down, you can change where your probe is depth-wise. And then you can rotate the probe with the Shift key. So if you hold Shift, and you press forward, that rotates it in, in, in the anterior posterior direction. And if you hold shift and you hit right, then this rotates it along this dimension. OK, so these are the basic ways that you're going to move your probe around. Now, uh, when you're planning your trajectory, you're going to want to see the areas that you're trying to hit. And then you're going to move your probe to hit those areas. So the way we do that is with these buttons over here. It's under this 3D area category. There's a few different ways to do that. The first is with this list areas. So this lists every single parsed thing within the Allen Atlas. And you can scroll down and you can pick your favorite. Uh, so this is, for example, if you know what it's called and you can scroll to it easily, like the thing I'm interested in is the striatum, which the Allen CCF calls the cotoputamen. So I can just scroll directly to that if I hit OK then it will draw the striatum in this 3D structure here. All right, we can also search areas. So let's say, for example, I'm interested in CA1, but I don't know exactly what the Allen Institute calls it. I can just type in CA1. And then I see here, um, there's a thing called field CA1. Okay, so that's what the CCF calls CA1. I can hit okay, and then it will draw CA1 for me. Um, we can also look at hierarchy areas. So this is useful, for example, if we want to look at a, can I get rid of this? Um, if we want to look at a, a location which is parsed into smaller things, but all together. So an example of that is cortical layers. Let's say I want to show all of the visual cortex, but I don't want to break it down by layers. Then I can go here and drill down cortex, cortical plate, isocortex, and then visual areas. And then primary visual cortex is here. So you see that the Allen goes down into the individual layers. I can pick one of those if I want, but if I want to see all of the visual cortex at the same time, I can just select this layer, hit OK, and then it'll draw this big blob of the visual cortex. 
Um, all right, so uh, that's how you draw areas. If you decide you don't want one, hit remove, get rid of CA1. We don't care about that anymore. All right, uh, then down here, you'll have some visibility options. So with the slice, what it's showing you at the moment is a slice through the CCF axis that follows the probe. So you can see that as I, as I rotate this, this slice is oriented in space so that it goes along the probe and it automatically redraws to be perpendicular to however you're looking at it. So uh, if I, for example, were to move my probe in a different orientation, um, then it's just gonna draw a slightly different slice along that thing, right? Um, so that's the slice that it's showing you. The current slice it's showing you is this average volumetric data. So this is what the average slice actually looks like. If you hit this slice button, then it will turn that into this parsed area. So this is categorized by the different labels. Um, so for example, this part of the probe is in um, the somatosensory cortex and that's dark green. So this is dark green up here. All right, so we can turn the slice on or to the areas or off by hitting that button. We can turn on or off the brain outline. We can turn on or off the probe. Uh, and we can turn on or off or 3D areas. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about these two down here because they're slightly more experimental. All right, so the general way that you plan a trajectory is, let's say I wanna hit both the visual cortex and the striatum. You can move your probe until it's intersecting with one of these areas in top here. So I'm giving myself the top down view and I'm just moving my probe to that location. All right, now I'm gonna to go to the side view and I'm gonna rotate my probe until it looks like it's about within the plane of the stridum uh, in this particular direction. Then I'm gonna look at this top down view and I'm going to rotate my probe leftwards until it's interacting with that, intersecting with that. All right, so the three steps were, the first is I moved my probe so that the top intersected with the top thing. Then I looked at the side view and I made sure that angle from the side was right. And then I looked at the top view and I made sure the angle from the top was right. All right, so the trajectory of my probe now is where I want it to be. Uh, we can change the depth then with this Alt key. So if I wanna hit both the visual cortex and the striatum at the same time, you can see this'll be a little bit of a stretch. Um, so maybe I'll, Maybe I'll move it slightly this way. That way I'll hit the posterior striatum. All right, let's maybe try something like that. Um, all right, so now I'm going to descend the probe by using Alt. So I'll hold Alt, press down. That'll move the probe down. All right, so it looks like it intersects with those two areas. Sorry, Andy, is it, you, are you descending the probe or are you selecting the, the sites that will be recorded from in the probe? Uh, I'm descending the probe. I don't know if... You can do that on the fly, selecting the sites, but I guess it's equivalent if that's a thing you can do. Because you can choose different banks, right? Yeah, that's right. I think you can do that in chunks of 384 channels, right? So yeah. um, so in that case, if you had it on, on one, this moves you know, by micron rather than chunk. So it's slightly okay. different. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay, so uh, so it looks like it's intersecting with those areas. Now on the right, you've got this readout of where the probe is going through. So on the top, it's going through the primary visual cortex. Then it goes through this uh, RA area, RL, sorry, RL. Uh, and then it goes through a bunch of white matter and then it goes through the striatum. So it looks like we hit all those things. Now, um, if we turn the slice back on, we can get a feel for where our probe is going to go You know, in, in the rest of these places that we're not targeting. So one of the nice things, for example, is that um, it's got a lot of this white matter here from the corpus callosum. So for example, I can use this potentially as a landmark where if I'm trying to go through this trajectory, um, I can say if I get axonal spikes here or I get no spikes, um, then that might be going through that region. Um, or for example, if you wanted to use the hippocampus as a, as a way to determine where your probe is, um, you can say, well, the hippocampus, it turns out is right next to where my probe is going to go. So if I move it slightly more medial, then I can go right through the hippocampus. And then I can have some other signatures looking at ripples or, or theta or something like that. Um, so that's what looking at this, this slice outline can give you an idea of what's near your probe and then what kinds of things you might want to uh, use as your landmarks. It also gives you an idea of 
if you are wrong in your trajectory, what will I hit? So for example, um, if I totally miss the striatum, then I'll end up going somewhere over here. So it looks like it's it's cortex. Um, and then you'll know where your cortex is. You know, it's the supplementary somatosensory area. So maybe you'll get somatosensory responses there if you hit it wrong. Um, so it kind of gives you an idea of when you put your probe in, what's around it. And that can tell you what kind of electrophysiological landmarks you'll use. And also if you get the wrong trajectory, how will you know where you are? So those are the general kind of things to keep in mind when you're planning this trajectory. Um, and that's pretty much the overview of this GUI. So the homework tonight, which was in the handout, is to use this GUI. The first thing is to install it. I think we've cleaned that up a little bit, but if you have any install problems, then you should ask on Slack. Uh, then it takes you through one example trajectory. It gives you a couple areas and it has you put your probe through those areas. And then finally, it has you make a trajectory for your own research and then upload that to a Google Drive folder. So then tomorrow, I'll pick a few of these to go through that bring up some important points about planning your trajectory and actually practical aspects of putting your probe in. Uh, and we'll talk about some of the issues that those have raised. Yeah, so that's that's uh, that's it. Great. Thank you so much, Andy. Perfect timing. Uh, Dario, can I check that you're still there? Because we still have seven questions. Um, I, I hope Dario is still there because we still have seven questions for him and I see lots of questions for Andy. So um, I just want to remind people that we have now opened the quote unquote interactive route to everyone. And so you can join the Slack if you have questions. For example, I see that one of the questions is about whether there's a RAT Atlas that is answered in the Slack if you want. But anyway, let's go through questions for Andy and remi reminder to people that you can upvote questions um if you're interested okay yeah so let me quickly talk about this one from cornelia um she asked if we can add multiple probes so you can't on this gui but i should have mentioned that flora uh and the lower left of the zoom has developed a four shank version of this so if you're using four shank probes then she's got a version of the gui which can which can show all of them um, okay. It might be slightly in the troubleshooting phase at the moment, um, but she's the person to ask about that. At the moment, the four shank probes are not for sale. So, but it, but that's going to be useful in a year or so. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, great. So, um, and so okay. So there's a bunch of questions. One is a general implant question: Is it possible to identify shank location and histology by electronic lesions versus dyes? And is there a utility of one versus the other? Sorry, can you say that? I missed. Uh, am I looking I think at? It's it? about reconstruction. Maybe we could wait one more day because in the third day you get a lot about reconstructing um, tracks with dyes or lesions. Um, Sorry, can you just read it one more time? I was trying to find it and I couldn't. I'll just listen. Yeah, because they move around. That's right. Um, general implant question: Is it possible to identify shank location and histology by electric lesions versus dyes? And is there a utility in one over the other? That's I Lauren. Yeah, I think dyes are generally really great at figuring out where the trajectory was. The thing that's a little bit difficult is figuring out where exactly your probe was along that trajectory. So uh, I would say dyes do a great job. You just need to use electrophysiological landmarks to figure out where exactly things were. Okay, um, and also this is the topic do. of the third day. So you, you'll get more information. And by the way, there is the ability to do some lesions in some versions of NeuroPixels. I think only the 2.0, but then you throw away the probe. Hmm. So it's at your peril. Yeah. Um, Lauren also asks, is there an atlas available for the rat brain? Yeah, so uh, if you're on Slack, I tried to make an FAQ section at the bottom of the pinned post. Uh, I was told that I was, I was shown a, a program that is, is a trajectory reconstructor in rats. I don't know if it's also a planner. So. Um, I, I pin that, you can look at that. There is a RAT Atlas that I think just recently came out. Um, it would take a bit of stuff to get it working in this Atlas. So I'll say it's um, possible, but uh, have so it done Mega yet. asks, Andy, are there documentations or instructions for the GUI? I can't find them on, on the repo. Nah, uh, I, mm, there might not be on the repo. Hopefully they're in the instructions in the homework. 
but I, sh I should put more comprehensive stuff on the repository. Well, so maybe you can see all the questions that people are asking and the instructions you found useful to give and put them in the document in the repo. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, similar question as Lauren from Erica. She wants to do Marmoset. So uh, is there any code bases that you know of that would allow us to convert Atlas coordinates to the Allen system, that I don't know because that's from us. But you know, what if you wanted to do more with it? Yeah, basically any any atlas that you can download in a volume and put into MATLAB, you could with some work get this working on. Um, I don't know if that exists on Marmosets. I think it even just came out for rats. So okay, that answers also Soraya's question.